today we are in Germany and we're going to transform into real Germans. We're going to travel back in time to medieval times and do what they did, visit places they went and eat what they ate. If you stay until the end, we're even going to take you to a medieval cave hundreds of meters under the earth. Right now we are wearing traditional German clothes. Ash is wearing lederhosen. And Summer is wearing a dirndl. So guys, we are in Nuremberg right now. And because this is Germany, we are experiencing some... Rainfall. German weather, you know. <laughs> right now we are in Nuremberg, one of the oldest and most well-preserved cities of Germany that have a lot of medieval buildings. We are now walking towards the main market. Every day of the week they have a market here until 6 p.m. where they sell all kinds of vegetables, fruits, specialties and delicacies. Oh, and this is the Frauenkirche. It's brick Gothic architecture and it was actually built in 1352. Guys, we have to come back here later to get one of the most famous delicacies of Nuremberg, which is a Lebkuchen, a Nuremberger gingerbread. But now we are in a hurry because we have to go to the castle first. That's also a very, key, very typical thing from the olden times, these paintings on old houses. Yeah, if I am reading it correctly, it says the Nuremberg land goes through all the land. But I'm not sure because they're using so the old font. Like a Roman city? Uh, I don't know. Dude, it feels like we're climbing a hill the whole time. <laughs> yes, we are, because we are climbing up to the castle. How did they do it? Do you think horses can, horse hairs just can like go, go up the up? hill easy? Well, probably not easy, but you know, we have these horse races here in Germany, which are really sturdy and have thick legs and they're huge and they can pull logs so they can pull carriages. Really? Yes. I haven't seen those horses so far. <laughs> yeah, now we don't have them in the city anymore. We, we made it. We did? Yeah, this is the castle. So this castle is nearly a thousand years old. And back in the day, this was like the hotspot for traveling kings who would come here to do festivals or court meetings. And actually in the late medieval times, this castle was considered one of the fanciest and well-placed within Germany. <sighs> and the way up here is pretty hard. But see guys, that's how it is. That's life in the medieval age. It's supposed to be hard. So baby, where are we going next? Now we're going to the house of Albrecht Dürer, which is one of the most famous painters, not only in Germany, but also in all of Europe. He was born here and he spent most of his life here and his work here, and we can still visit his house. And his house is right next to the castle. Okay, so guys, what you're seeing there is still part of the historic city wall. It's just a little bit uh, more until we're at his house and Look, so those walls a... are from like the medieval times? This house is from the medieval times, No, yes. I mean the wall. Oh, the wall is from medieval times. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> so did you, did you ever pass history in school, baby? <laughs> I passed, but I have no idea how. You know, you always have to memorize a lot of things in history. I thought that was totally overrated. So this is his house. And I wasn't so good in history, but I really loved arts. And the crazy thing about him is even when he was six years old, he already made paintings which were crazy detailed. And there's a very famous self-portrait of him. Um, the detail of his painting were just ginormous. And also it was said that he was a really handsome guy. Oh, and I don't like know if you... Like me. <laughs> like Ash, absolutely, <laughs> just more hair. And um, if you guys know Andy Warhol, he was strongly inspired by Albrecht Dürer. So let's have a quick look inside. Wow, that looks really cool, bro. That looks like it's the entry into the castle. Yeah, And it's man. like straight out of a movie or mm -hmm. something. True, true. Let's go. Guten Tag. So unfortunately, they didn't allow us to film inside his house, but here are two of his most famous paintings. The first one is a self-portrait that he painted when he was only 13 years old and he had just started working at his father's goldsmith workshop. The next one is the so-called young hare. This rabbit is so famous because it's extremely accurate and it nearly looks like a photo. This is an old window in his house that they preserved. Like a very typical, famous German old school window style. 
Rundglasfenster. Guys, we are now getting a very traditional sweet that we're going to try together. It's called a snowball. I want to try it so bad. Mm. Tastes great, but it's hard to eat. It's, it's like sweet murku mm. with like sugar powder on top. The last time I had a snowball, I think I was like 10 or 12 years old. Mm. Yeah, it's slightly like murku. It's less crunchy than murku, more doughy. We are entering the, the case. case. Wow. And it's pretty cool. Oh my god. It's crazy, but it's exactly my size. It's like I'm perfectly sized. No. Look. For me, I need to bend down a little oh, bit. No, see, there's even water on the floor. It's dripping water from the top, and there's water on the floor, guys. So these are the tunnels where they've been storing beer. The city of Nuremberg has one of the largest networks of underground passages in the world. And these passages are actually beer cellars. A thousand years ago, Nuremberg did not have a waste management system. They threw trash on the streets and in the river. The water in Nuremberg was so contaminated, it was dangerous to drink. Guys, remember I love stairs. So people drank more beer than water because they realized when they drank beer, they were safe. Even pregnant women drank beer and babies were given beer right after they stopped drinking mother's milk. That was because the water in the beer was boiled multiple times and one of the ingredients, hops, was antibiotic. So these are the barrels that they used to store the beer in. Now let's go deeper. In Nuremberg, they produced bottom fermented beer, which needed a temperature between 8 to 12 degrees Celsius to ferment. I am so cold. It's between 8 and 10 degrees down here. In the 14th century, the government made a law that everyone who brews beer needed an underground cellar. There were about 40 breweries at that time, and they all had to have their own cellars. Help. <laughs> when Karl von Linde invented a refrigeration system in 1876, everybody could make beer without using a cellar. So suddenly Nuremberg lost the monopoly on beer producing. So nowadays the cellars are empty, they're used for concerts and tours, but they're not used to make beer anymore. So the place that we're at, we would call it in Germany, and it's Sündflüge. Bierstube, kind of like means uh, uh, a cozy place to drink good beer. So in Germany, it's like a lot of towns have their own brewery. And even though the ingredients are the same by law in all the beer, every beer tastes slightly different. And today we are going to try alcohol free beer. It's really refreshing. Are you feeling tipsy? No. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm on the hunt for some real German dinner. I want something hearty, I want something warm, and yeah, super tasty. So let's see if we can find something. There are so many things in Germany I wanna try when it comes to food, but the problem is it's all pork or beef. That's why now we're eating kebab. This is a pommes not Tasha. It has fries and... So this is always a safe um, option for us because this yes. comes with chicken fries and some veggies yes yeah, so let's try this one mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the medieval underground prison under this building which is the old um, townhouse town hall they have a medieval prison still you can still visit it wow that's cool 